As I say, a warm Celtic welcome to you all. And this is an evening of uh, poetry and prose that's been organised by Irish Pen, Pen Iron, Scottish Pen, and Wales Pen Cymru. And our purpose is twofold. First, to honour a writer of international fame, and secondly, to protest and publicise the harsh treatment he meted out to him for his civil rights activities. Currently, he's been held under interim bail after contracting COVID-19 infection in prison. Our panel of six writers will read from his work and connected with elements of their own writing. While many of you are already familiar with Varavara Rao's writings and his situation, we will begin with a unique contribution. It is my very great pleasure to welcome Banuga Pal Nelutla, currently living in Hyderabad, but he is a poet, a translator, and a nephew of Varavara Rao. Banuga Pal will speak about the latest developments in the case of Varavara Rao. Thank you, Iggy. Friends from Irish Pen, Scottish Pen, and Pen Wales, and many other friends watching this from all over the world. We are actually in Hyderabad. This is midnight, but I think in Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, it's evening. Good evening, friends. At the outset, I, on my own behalf and on behalf of my family, express our deep gratitude to Irish Pen, Scottish Pen, and Pen Wales for demonstrating this rare and great solidarity and concern for my uncle, a world renowned poet, Varavararo, who has been in jail for the last three years in a fabricated criminal case. Let me first take a few minutes to introduce him before going into the current status of the case. Varavar Rao's multifaceted personality includes his standing as a poet and writer, his activity as a public speaker and public intellectual, and his conduct as a magnetic mesmerizing person. And he used all these characteristics to serve the cause of people and supporting people's struggles. Beginning to write poetry in his teens, his journey in poetry reads as a history of Telugu modern poetry in the later half of the 20th century. He was one of the founders of Revolutionary Writers Association that is committed to support and propagate people's struggles. In the last five decades, he published 15 collections of poetry and his collected poetry appeared in 2007 and 2017, marking his 50 years and 60 years in poetry. He also, he is also a literary critic with a path-breaking PhD study on the relationship between society and literature, particularly an armed struggle led by peasants in this part of the country in 1940s. He published about 20 books on language, literature, history, and politics. He was a popular, much sought after public speaker, addressing hundreds of meetings and inspiring thousands of people. He worked as a teacher, a college lecturer of language and literature for over 30 years directly inspiring thousands of students of literature. His influence is magnetic and he drew thousands of people towards his ideals with his mesmerizing smile and words. As he employed all his wonderful skills to question the state about people's rights of land, livelihood and liberty, he became an eyesore to the powers that be. In the process, the rulers implicated him 
in 25 criminal cases 25 criminal cases between 1973 and 2018 and after a prolonged judicial trials the law courts struck down all of them each of them proclaiming him not guilty but then he had to spend seven years in jail as an under trial prisoner then after striking down all the cases in 2018 a new conspiracy case under a draconian law amended in 2008 called the unlawful activities prevention act short form is uapa was foisted against him along with 15 others lawyers writers teachers cultural activists and human rights defenders after three years and many turns and twists the case stands still as on today in the meanwhile a u.s based world renowned cyber security firm analyzed the hard disks shown as evidence in the case and confirmed that the so-called electronic evidence in the case was planted using malware so the case the evidence is all cooked up though in indian jurisprudence the established principle is bail is rule and jail an exception the dreaded uapa makes getting bail very difficult that's why for the last three years they have not been getting bail and they are being incarcerated if it is not out of place i would like to bring two horrible instances of this draconian law because today the 29th september 2021 marks the one year of another incarceration of a journalist from delhi who was arrested on this day a year ago he is still in jail just because he was booked under this act his only crime quote unquote crime was that he was going to report on a gang rape incident which the government wanted to conceal the other case is of a jesuit priest Father Stan Swamy, who is a co-accused in the same case as Varavar Rao, this 84-year-old liberation theologist, a patient of Parkinson's disease, was denied bail, even denied a sipper because he could not hold a glass. He was denied bail again and again, even as tested COVID positive, due to this criminal negligence. he died 2 months ago the charges against him were never brought to trial but the capital punishment was executed this is the status of criminal justice system in india varavar rao was also denied bail a number of times he was also a target of this kind of negligent criminal justice system even though he suffered from pre existing as well as age related and jail induced health issues his bail was consistently rejected in lower courts he had electrolyte imbalance temporary dementia and finally tested covid positive last july in july 2020 then after again a prolonged trial in bombay high court a higher court granted him interim bail for 6 months on medical grounds in february that bail was conditional he should not leave mumbai because the case is being heard in tried in mumbai and he should not meet nobody other than family members 
he should not appear on media he should not speak to media there are umpteen conditions and this medical bail was only for 6 months he was released in march and by september 6th the 6 months duration expired and we applied to the court for extension of time as well as relaxation of conditions the court could not take up our petition on two earlier dates now it is postponed to october 13th we do not know what will the court decide but we hope he will get at least extension to stay in bombay to undergo two immediate surgeries he needed one is a hernia surgery and the other is cataract surgery on 13th that will be decided in the meanwhile the bench which has been hearing the bail extension petition is changed so we don't know what will happen on october 13th we on behalf of the family once again thank you for your concern and solidarity now i would like to because this is a session to read his poetry and prose i would like to begin that with a poem of his this is actually on jail this was written in jail in 2006 when he was in jail at that time his grandson was a 4 year old grandson he in building his doll's house he also built a jail room he said that 4 year old grandson said this jail room is for my grandfa grandfather who writes Le- hearing this for our wrote this poem only to demolish title of the poem is only to demolish not as constructed as a house the doll house that kids make does not have walls it is only a nest of birds hanging from a branch like a bunch of flowers in the sandy bed of a stream children themselves become nature to build a nest around their foot and boisterously clap if water wipes it out and celebrate sand turning into stream they make a paper boat or a knife boat that may drown or flow away with the weight of flowers they wait in anxious exuberance to see the boats unite at the horizon but then where are the sandy streams where are the nests where are the boats and strolls even walls have become the shadows of apartments with only corridors outside the walls without air and without light balconies have grills and security but no amaranths and not even bougainvillea just toss the kids what does nature mean to them it is only the artificial stars on the dark ceiling of their bedroom all kids in the world very well know that they get beaten up if they are insistent now they are coming to know that they would be sent to jail if they speak they would be sent to jail if they speak now in the doll house that they build they are learning to make provision for a jail room for the grandpa who writes poetry but but they build the prison house only to demolish only to demolish thank you well thank you very much indeed vinugopal for your uh, informative and moving presentation and the poem of course and we'll hear again from you later you will understand in the interest of time i have given you a very bare 
uh, biographical sketch. And I now continue in the same vein to introduce our panel readers. And uh, the audience will easily find these extensive biographies online. So uh, June Considine lives in Dublin. She writes books for children and young adults under the name of Laura Elliott. Kate Ennells lives in Cavan. She is a prize-winning poet who organizes uh, poetry events and workshops. Basha B. Fraser lives in Edinburgh. She is an award-winning poet, writer, and academic specializing in post-colonial literature and theory. Ifor Van Abdlin lives in Carnarvon. He is a writer, broadcaster, and current national poet of Wales. Anya McGlynn lives in Dublin. Uh, she is a poet and children's writer and is the current laureate Nanog, the children's laureate. And last, but by no means least, Leela Soma lives in Glasgow. She is a poet and novelist with works that reflect her dual heritage of India and Scotland. So we begin then the, the panel readings with uh, Basha B. Fraser from Scottish Pen reading the Varavaroa poem, The Pulse, followed by her own poem, Remember I Sing For You, which she has dedicated to Rao. Thank you, Iggy. Uh, the Pulse by Varavara Rao, a poet we all admire and respect, and we hope he'll be free soon. What if I sleep in despair and awake in hope? I am the leader of my generation. I am the singer, the voice of my epoch. What if I taste the fruits of my daydreams only in my dreams at night? What if my eyes are soaked in blood and sweat pours all day long? I am the one who has not lost faith in tomorrow's light. I know I am giving words to the unrest around me and stoking the fire sleeping within me for tomorrow's peace and tomorrow's brightness. Countless vague ideas seek expression and individuality in my letters. The sun who has not yet risen in life except in the stirring of my black brother burns inside me. The man in is my heir who desires revolution, not mere destruction in this or that hemisphere, Africa or Asia, Europe or America. I am the only hope still left in this world for the hapless ones, down and out, in hunger, in unfulfilled desire. What does it matter? If it is unripe and indistinct, I am but giving voice to my age, moved to the heart in passion and emotion. I am the electric power, born in this operation generator. I am a glow. I'm not born like the lamps of old, trusting in God to burn even in the open. I can make the molecule dance, the atom sing. I can realize the progress of the world and I shall have my triumph inscribed by the rocket on the moon. What if my life breath goes out after lighting a thousand lamps like me? I am the radiance of this age. I am electric power born out of operation generator. I am the resolution, uh, revolution. This is translated by Veni Gopal, his own nephew. <clears throat> and this is my tribute to Varavara Rao. Remember, I sing for you from Varavara Rao. When I sing, 
I sing for you of the morning mists and meditate that meditate on grass and shrub and hesitate to lift at will as you gravitate across the dew to the waiting gate. I sing for you and welcome you to step beyond your guarded walls and hear the freedom of bird calls, witness the spray of waterfalls and sink into the spontaneous flow enthralled by tides that come and go, I sing for you. For all you hold as dear as life you see unfold with freedoms that you uphold deep in your core where you are bold, but I sing aloud of them for you. So do not let their batons wield to pound my flesh to make me bleed. Let not your silence be their shield to wreak the terror that they breed. Don't let them handcuff my hands that create songs for this great land. And when they shut the world from me, remember I love liberty of which I sing for you and me to celebrate the bounty and beauty of this earth where we were meant to walk free. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bashabi, your, uh, your reading. Uh, next, we have a, a trio of readings of the Barbara Rao poem with the English title, Reflection. First, Vinukapal will read in the original Telugu. Then, Ifor uh, Abdlin from Wales, uh, Pen Cymru will read Meverdot, his Welsh translation of the poem. And finally, uh, Leela Soma from Scottish Pen will read the English translation. Hello? Yeah. Uh, the poem just now Bashabi uh, read was written in 1965. Four years, man landed on the moon. Parvara was writing, I will land on the moon. Now this poem is reflection. Uh, this was in the context of a false case against him that he was distributing explosives. He said, reflection. Bambulu nenu pansaledu, bhavalu pansaledu. Inupa bootu to nuve, chimala putta nu tokite, putta pagili puttinavi pratikriya bhaval. Tene peranu lati to eat chinubu kotina pudu. Tene tigalu chedirina sebdam, ni gundello bombai pailind. Vonukuto kandinani moham ninda. Bayam Daddu Katind Janam Gundello Dagina Jeri Vekti Anukoni No Tuta Lato Kalchao Naludisela Viplavam Pratidhaninchin. You have to unmute Ifa. Thank you, pardon. Uh, Reflection was written by Rao in prison in 1985. The Indian authorities might want to reflect on how many years in total he's been unfairly imprisoned since then. Sean Astyohan Ratnish, Damar Kvithet Kvraig. Here is the translation in Welsh. Mavardod. Nid vi nath gyflenwyr ffrwydron na'r syniadau o ran hynny. Chi nath sathri ach sotla dyr ar y twmpath morgrig ac o'r pridd a chwalwyd e ginodd meddyliau am ddial. Chi nath waldio'r cwch gwenyn hefo'ch thyn bambu a sŵn y gwenyn wrth wasgaru yn ffrwydron ach wynebau syn a'r heinyn goch gan ofn. Pan dechriodd tybyrdda, buddigoliaeth, guro yng nghalon y werin, 
camdybiwyd hynny gennych gan anelich gynnau ato a'r chwyldro yn atseinio ar bob gorwel. Hi. Um, can I thank the Scottish Pen and all the other pens for allowing me to read uh, a wonderful person's um, poem. It was great to hear Venugopal reading out in Telugu, and I hope I can do some justice by reading it in English. It was translated by uh, K. Balagopal, and uh, I hope that you will enjoy this poem reflection. I did not supply the explosives, nor ideas for that matter. It was you who trod upon the antel with iron heels, and from that trampled earth, vengeance was born. It was you who struck the beehive with your lati, scattering bees, exploding against your shaken visage, blotched red in fear. When the victory drum started beating in the heart of the masses, you mistook that for an individual and trained your guns. Revolution reverberated from the four horizons. Wonderful poem. That's wonderful indeed. Uh... And thank you to Vinugapal, Ifor, and Leela. Uh, excellent readings, thank you all. And now, uh, Kate Ennels from Irish Pen will read two of her own poems. First is called Woman, and the second is called Rising Sun. Kate. Thank you, Iggy. Just to say, they're not my own poems. I'm reading oh. Varavara's poems. Oh, heavens. <laughs> no, yeah. you'll all be very grateful to hear there, that. There goes my salary. <laughs> um, but just before I do, I want to thank June and Lisa in particular, who've done so much work for this event and for inviting me to read um, some of Varavara's poetry. I mean, it is a real honour for me. I think um, that one of um, the most powerful aspects of Varavara's poetry is his imagery and his descriptions about humanity and hope. And sadly, it's this talent and skill that threatens um, the oppressive regimes that we're living under these days. And that leads to the imprisonment and torture of so many writers. But it's in the nature of poets and writers to hold up a mirror to different aspects of humanity, whether it's love or beauty, suffering, cruelty, poverty, or injustice. And Varavara does it beautifully and displays great courage in doing so. So the first poem I'm going to read is Woman, and it's one of his early poems written in 1975. Woman. Woman. Your blood turns into a child, a blend of your dreams and his passions. Woman, your blood infuses life into hungry children. Woman, your blood sweats into pearls in the house, in the kitchen, in the field, in the grains. Still, you are a slave in the system. You are the shadows spreading silently along the wall of male arrogance, which confines your individuality. Every pleasure in the world needs to be purchased. Only you require and fa favour with bliss. You offer not merely delight, but dominance over you. One who plunders you, offering jasmine flowers or a good sari is the benevolent husband. One who shares with you a charming smile or a sweet word is a lover. All that is lost in life is yours and all the gain 
goes to the man. It is true you are half of life in the drama of joy and grief. Your part is grief. Woman, you cannot overthrow this system with tears. You must bathe it in bluish flames of fury. You must thunder for your rights, step in unison with the marching feet on the path of revolution from out of the system that looks upon you as a pleasurable object towards a setup which makes you a force, an individual, and join your hands in the pledge of revolution Without the rise of revolutionary sun in your heart too, there can no, not be a triumph. The second poem is short, Rising Sun, and it was written only three years later. And I think uh, the images in this poem are wonderful. I love the optimism of the last line. Rising Sun. O oh, enemy, in the wee hours of one fine morning, after tying behind the back the hands that fought for sunrise, after blindfolding the eyes that looked for sunrise, after putting the noose around the throat that spoke for sunrise, after pulling the trigger, you turn to the east only to find the sky blood red in that crimson lap someone's eyes have just opened. And that was translated by M. Venu Gopal. Today, I think more than ever, we need to stop, see, and hear the reflections like this about our world. We need to stand up and read our poetry aloud together like we do tonight. And so thank you again for organizing this event. Poetry like Vara Vara's is not only a balm, it provides humanity with courage, solidarity, and hope. Thank you. Well, thank you indeed uh, to you, uh, Kate. And my apologies again for uh, this attribution. Okay. Don't, you wish, don't you wish you had written them? <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Thank you. And so next, um, uh, Ifra Abdlin will read uh, the Welsh stroke English translations of two of Varavara Rao's poems. Um, Gwir in Welsh, The Truth in English, Ubarth in Welsh, The Bard in English. Well, Shuva Kanshalu, Banachdi, Kavarchion, Banachdan, and uh, greetings to all of Varavara Rao's uh, friends and family who join us this evening or tonight. Uh, uh, time ancestor, a couple of Danta Alev Anacht, San Imachcha, Mar an Imachcha. Egraha le pen heron, mar ba erinache a chwir danta varavara rao in Atnadon. I was first introduced to the uh, work of varavara rao by an Irish poet, uh, Gabriel Rosenstock, so it's particularly appropriate to take part in this pan Celtic event to support uh, the call for his release and to protest his incarceration. And I thought this would be the prime theme of the Irish Telugu, so the Irish Rao, the Irish in Kalishara, can we stick that or will you not a bottle and drink that or come to the bed? Well, if you do that, can we still do it? Yes, sir. Is going to be or sisag or studying the camera grade of the Yochimi. This first poem uh, is a translation of uh, Kavi, the Bard, by Varavara Rao. But as I cannot number myself amongst the 82 million speakers of Telugu around the world. It is a translation of Venugopal's English translation rather than the Telugu original. So, Abad, Kavi, the Bard. Panvor Dren, Achad, Akamala, Dion, Amsar, and Amchwido, Akan, Takir, Sunk, 
Ni ddydd gwaed yn diferyn a daglan disgyn y chwaith. Bydd mellt yn chwyrlion drama, glaw man yn chwyddo'n ddiliw a chan gorthori dagra gwewyr mam. Mi fyrlym a allan rhwng fariar carchar gan leisio neges y bardd. Pan fod tafodau'n tincian a'i tôn yn rhyddhau'r awyr ar gan yn troi'n arf mewn brwydr, bydd ar y gelyn ofn y bardd. Bydd ydy garcharu. Ac yn tynhau'r rhaff yn gwlwm am ei wddwf, ond bydd geiriau'r bardd eithiois yn y nadlu ymhlith y werin. Mae'r grocbren fel clorian yn gwyro un ffordd er mwyn hadu'r ddeiar. Herio angau. Ac yn dal y crocwr o imperialydd pitw yn ei fatl ei hun. Now, uh, the um, English translation, the Bard. When the order is amiss and billowing pitch clouds of time strangle the throat, neither blood trickles nor tears drop. Lightning swirls into thunder, drizzles surge into deluge and absorbing mother's tears of agony pearl out from prison grills voice of the poet's missive. When the tongue pulsates, tone manumits the air and song turns missile in battle, the foe fears the poet, incarcerates him and tightens the noose around the neck. But already the poet in his notes breathes among the masses. The scaffold, like a gravitating balance, disseminates into earth challenges to death and hoists the paltry, the paltry hangman colonist. Prif drosedd ddarafararaw yw pledio achos gwerinwyr i rhanbarth ac ymgyrchu o blaid cyfiawnder cymdeithasol ac mae'r cyfieithiad olag i ni o'i gerdd y gwir ond yn tanlinellu i gonsarn parhaol am ei gydyn er bod y bardd i hun yn ei gell. Ni slafri y chorbydd ar hawliach yn ilysio nhw ar y chwyd ffiliach da, ac ys tyswrgym gydiogi si hen as yn brysŵn gylwyr. To close, a translation of Casta Givi, The Truth, with Raoul typically worrying about the plight of others and the continuing need for social justice rather than his own circumstances. Thank you for this opportunity. Dilchan Vaur, Mir Buechus Tapeliev, Dania Wadanu. A gwir, Castagivi, the truth. A gwir, nan eith chwys gweithiwr byth gyhoeddi. A gwir, nan eith ei stimog byth i ddweud. A gwir, nan eith ei ddagra byth at geli, na'i ddillo, na'i llafur byth i wneud. Tybed. All yr inc sydd yn diferu o bin bardd o beithio ei lefaru. The truth that workers' sweat will never utter. The truth that his empty stomach will never utter. The truth that his tears will never utter. The truth that his toiling fists will never utter. Can a drop of ink from a poet's pen hope to utter it. I'm terribly sorry, I've missed, I've not printed the last line for some reason. Well, that's, a, that's a good way to bring it down at the end. Anyway, uh, Daniel Walu, thank you very much, and back to Iggy. On mute. Uh, thank you. You for uh, splendid readings. Uh, if the last line was uh, included in the English version, it was yes. So we are the we are the lucky ones. But well, your French, your your British colleagues may will come after you, I'm sure. But thank you again. For powerful, powerful readings. So we now turn uh, to uh, to the Irish and uh, on your Le Glyn. From Irish pen, 
will read her Irish language poem. I hope I've got that right. Na Chefig Egg Marshall Lo, which I'm told translates as Refugee March to Nowhere. Anya? Ur Mila Mila Mahagothegi Agus Mila Boyachas Lagachena as Quira Hortum Lev in you. I have such admiration for Varavara Rao and indeed for anyone who speaks out and actively fights against injustice because so often we stand idly by. What do we do? We see injustice all around us and we share Facebook posts or we hit like or maybe an angry or a sad emoji. But sometimes I feel that's just being a helpless bystander, watching awkwardly not knowing what to do. And this particular poem I wrote about injustice. I wrote it when I was watching the news and watching some years ago, a group of a large group of Rohingya refugees walking as if they were marching directly towards the camera. And the camera person had such an angle on them that I literally felt as if the refugees were walking directly through the screen into my sitting room. And that sense of helplessness, of standing idly by, prompted this poem. So I'll read it, Oskailge, Natefig, Igmorsha, Lo, and then I'll read the English translation. Honikamarkuinit, Maravach Skye Shangon, Igmorsha, Lo, Idron Camera. Bhordone a dust in a rahni morna, star or mind to refain, or ha nochta, os our goer. I see a dig tart in drone skyline. Honeycomber, Nasuila, Maravitaha, eat shukaha, exkilta, poisha, spoish, no gor huil sheet illa gun hine, a machas and telefish, a machs a shomra sitter in our mask. Eat Hotlitishin, nor Eric Shiat Sapir, on Tarn, Erin Mord, Osar Gormach. Hinik Shit or who? Exul. Owl is not revown, a hun var of war shoil sa. Is Solarev Deshagin, on Capra is Lu, a Harishkind, done here dinner. Fion dinner dernach, Mehemach, on Doris Tossig. Dirchmer, Erichela. Rina Koch Utmoy Lik Kirsur is Glan na Gravroga Orion Da Smig. And in a prose translation, Refugee March to Nowhere. Walking towards us, an army of relentless ants marching into the camera. Their silence hummed a song we'd heard before. For us, the song of our own starving people droned down through history. As they approached our screen, we saw the listless eyes. We saw walking. We saw pain and death. And we waited for them to pass. But they kept walking, walking straight through the camera, straight through the screen, straight through our sitting room. They were broken. Dead men. Dead women, so consumed with walking, they didn't even see the remains of the supper on the coffee table. They just walked, as if there was only this walking, this relentless, aimless walking to nowhere. And before we could offer even the crust of a sandwich to the one in front, the last one had walked out the front door. We looked at one another fumbling awkwardly with our serviettes as we each wiped the crumbs off our chin. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed. Anya, a splendid. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so we promised you uh, prose as well as uh, poetry and uh, um, now I, I'll call on uh, June Considine from Irish Pen uh, to read uh, an extract from Varavara Rao's book of essays, Captive Imagination. Good 
Good evening, everybody. Um, I'd like to read an extract from Captive, Captive Imagination, which is a series of essays written when Varavara was in jail in the mid 80s. They appeared as a regular column in the Indian Express and were later published as a collection. It's a wonderful book, lyrical, passionate, insightful, and covers many subjects, including birds. The piece I'm going to read, which I've abridged slightly because of time constraints, contrasts the constraints of imprisonment against the freedom to fly. All creatures, great and small. Surely it can't be a pleasant thing for birds as symbols of freedom to be in jail. And yet, how can I claim that they are not cheerful and contented? Whenever I see pigeons inside the jail, I wonder. Memories of bygone days come rushing back when I look into their eyes or watch their movements. And the sight of these pigeons reminds me not of people forgotten, but of the bonds that must be forgotten, not of past lives, but of the past trapped in the present. When my cell was near the Pansy Gat, the gallows, there were pigeons cooing everywhere, perched on trees, on the wall around the gallows, all around the water tank above the prisoner's kitchen. When I was shifted to that part of the jail in March 1986, there was not a single pigeon here. One summer afternoon, a pigeon fell to the ground, electrocuted by the wires running along the top of the walls. Like a piece of the moon falling to earth, a dead bird fell at my feet. But there was no prince to claim the birds as in the Jataka tale, nor did I have the power to bring it back to life. But then I don't quite understand how these surroundings have grown so congenial over the last two and a half years and why there are pigeons everywhere now. In the trees, in the courtyard in front of my cell, on the barracks ventilators, before the staff kitchen, near the water, above the ledges of the barracks behind my cell. They are everywhere, like blue gray clouds that have come down from the sky. The sounds, the rustling against the tin window shades, pecking at each other. The fluttering of wings form a background to the silence of my solitary existence. They have grown so familiar that I have stopped going to the back of my cell, fearing that I may disturb them when I walk briskly in the evenings. Sometimes I go there, stepping softly barefoot to watch them. Even at night, as I pace inside my cell, I do so in perfect silence for fear of disturbing the pair of pigeons nesting in the ventilator. One morning, a pigeon sat on the kitchen roof. It looked helpless. It kept fluttering its wings, but wouldn't move when I waved my hand or sprinkled some grain. I took it into my hands and saw that it was badly wounded. I brought it in and fed it. I kept it in the ventilator, safe from the eye and the hunger of the cat but it died the following morning. As I buried the dead bird under the lemon tree, I remember the lines I had within me after the Meirut riots. After visiting Meirut, Asker Ali engineer made a significant comment in the Indian Express. He said that while the Muslims told you how many Muslims had died, and the Hindus gave you the number of Hindus dead. The human beings who could tell you how many human beings had died were rare. I wrote, in the land 
where Valmiki's tears over a dead curlew grew into an epic. In the times of Salam Ali, for whom birds were his eyes and wings and his very life, why this death of humans who love other humans? There is an awful silence here in summer, more silence than in other seasons. The sound of changing gears on the road in front of the jail, of vehicles halting, of noises ranging from those of horns to punctures to tire bursts, and sometimes even accidents can be heard. In the midst of this, a coal drunk on tender and juicy shoots, as the Telugu poet Patana puts it, visits our courtyard, bringing pleasure. A train chugging in the distance, sounds of its arrival and its departure, followed by the quickening throb of its gathering speed. Factory sirens measuring out workers' lives, they signal to me the passing of time. Through it all, the coal's song, calling sweetly from the top of the mango tree behind my window. Either enamoured of the sweetness of its own voice or echoing the sound of another call, the song once begun is without end. These summer evenings are particularly pleasant. Locked up, even before sunset, I stand at my window till the star from the corner greets me in the dark, or the moonbeams flutter through mango branches from over the prison walls, or the ginty is rung and the radio begins to play, and the invisible Cole's spring song reaches my ears. Thank you. Bravo, bravo, uh, Adjun, uh, beautifully read and uh, stunning piece. It really is. Next, uh, we have um, um, Leela, Leela Soma, and she will read um, A River Born in Nazik. And this is a, a, a relatively recent poem by Barbara Rao. Uh, she may correct me in the date of it. I don't know. Anyway, welcome, Leela. Thank you, Eggy. Um, it's so clear now that the law is an ass, as we can see, and uh, it's just been uh, incredible to listen to these powerful poems, whether it is um, the Mediterranean, the boats coming in with our immigrants and pretty Patel's posture, or whether it's the Supreme Court in America with the, um, you know, uh, the behavior on Capitol Hill on the 6th, and of course India, which is more or less topping the place with this kind of injustice as such. I'm again honored to read, and, uh, and I noticed that this poem was done uh, in 20, March 13, 2018, so it must be one of the, 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 the latest poems. I think Venugopal will tell us more, because it was translated uh, by him, and uh, Again, I'm honored and humbled to read this poem. Um, and I noticed that in the title of the Andhra Jyoti uh, Literary Supplement, it says Naziko Putina Godavari. And Godavari is a river uh, in south of India. And I come from the south, but from slightly away from where Venugopal is. I understand a few words in Telugu, uh, and I, I re relished it when I was reading the uh, first poem and he did and I have a sister who actually lives in Andhra Pradesh and she lives in an ashram and dedicates her life to the the poorest in, in, in there so um, there are still people in dreadful need in India and I think their voices should be heard and I salute Varavara Rao for that. A river born in Nasik since the first spring, the river is witnessing human beings struggling in sludge on its banks, collecting roots and tubers, making tools out of stone, melting their own muscles, inventing fire, 
hunting, singing, and dancing, drenching soil with their blood and sweat. The river also saw them diverting their own self to harvest crops with lifts, canals, drawing wheels and reservoirs. It saw farmers creating a glorious world, adding a little water, a little dew, a little sunlight and a little air, more of their flesh and blood to adorn soil with magical powers. When the market entered the farmer's life for the selfish motive of the invisible hand, the river saw everybody from the commission agent to the broker getting rich as farmers remained forever in debt. Everybody paid lip service and announced their debt to the farmer. But the farmer is the only one who doesn't enjoy a loan favor. Farmer does not get remunerative prices and warehouses and warehouses. Banks that cherish serving the Malias and Moody's turn barren cows for farmers. As the idiom goes, for a farmer, it's a forest to sell and a fire to buy. Farmer alone doesn't know the value of labor. The river wondered which was greater, the water it carried or the tears and blood of farmers. In peasants' struggles or farmers' suicides, the river expressed its fury accompanied by the forest. It changed its direction and marched to the capital. In the land of cracks, blood oozing out of cracked feet turned into cover on their heads, became walking red flags, became flowers showered by the city. Power cannot but bow down to unity march of farmer, forest, and flowing river. Powerful, powerful words. And I just wish, as Bishabi said, that Vara Vara Rao is free and breathes the air of freedom and is with us flowers and rivers and nature once again. So thank you again to all of you for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you indeed, uh, Leela. Uh, it's a, a power, powerful statement, yet another powerful statement by Rav, Rav, uh, uh, Ru, by Rav Ru. I'm sorry, I've, I've, I'm struggling with that because I took uh, advice earlier in the day from someone who, who might have passed through India at one stage <laughs> and left me with different options. Anyway, delighted. Anyway, thank you, Leela. And I believe um, our final contribution is from uh, Venugopal. Am I right there? Yes. And, uh, and he will read his own poem. The title is The One Who Defied Death. Venugopal. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, this is a poem on my uncle. This was written on the day he was tested COVID positive, that is July 18th, 2020, in a jail. Uh, another context of this poem is that because he spoke truth, he spoke truth to the oppressors, the exploiters, and the ruling classes, he has always been a target and there were many attempts on his life but police attempted vigilante forces attempted landlords attempted but he survived that's why i wrote, I wrote when covid attacked him i wrote the one who defied death sure he will come back sure he will come back trouncing the cruel state, 
will return freeing himself from the invisible death trap he will again rise above with his characteristic smile will walk back to us with an open embrace youngest of many siblings he was 10th child in his family and that's why he was uh, seen as unfaithful and this name the peculiar name varavara rao uh, meaning in telugu selected of the selected chosen of the chosen youngest of many siblings called unfaithful and named chosen among the chosen hot tender as flower petal world sharp as diamond touching innumerable minds made him darling of the millions as war cry of the glorious mosses enduring the stress of foes and friends alike he suffered the solitude of a thousand sleepless nights adds fragrance to the smell of soil revels in friendship with blades of grass feels every droplet in the river stream remains untouched by pride despite reaching the peak an ever fascinated kid eyes and face glow in wonderment on hearing anything new courage personified always on the forefront as the enemy's access blown open the doors of his home he invited himself into the home of the world walking on the edge of the knife he ridicules the death angel hidden in the shadow of the swords of cruel mobs an evergreen companion to three generations an irresolutely tightened fist for five decades a smile of perpetually luminous stream he who transcended his own age it is a ridiculous daydream this vicious state this invisible lethal insect called corona defeating the great world the burning alphabet the defier of mortality he will come back trouncing the cruel state will return freeing himself from the invisible death trap thank you Anil Kapal uh, for that uh, extra special uh, poem to end our uh, our event. Uh, we'd like to send send our 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 very great thanks to you uh, and uh, send uh, very good wishes to your family who may be watching in from far off India and uh, and in particular perhaps your esteemed uncle pass on good wishes. to him from us here it just remains now for me to to thank uh, the others uh to start with our audience uh we've been very busy sending in uh, comments i haven't been able to see them unfortunately <laughs> but uh, um, i i presume they are all uh, uh echoing um well what i've been saying which is that this has been a, an ex- extraordinary evening of readings and on the half of that audience uh, i want to thank all of the distinguished readers and and many individuals who contributed to the planning of of this event and making it happen and i think most of us around the table would agree that uh, the june concertine uh, deserves special mention for that finally uh, i know that some of you are actively involved in Parvara's case and similar cases through their membership of a pen center and uh, there's an old tradition in Irish culture called the hat at the door and we would all consider the hat well filled if one or two or more of the others were to join that very worthy cause that is pen international and on that note i wish you 
a peaceful and safe good evening. Thank you.